Uh, this one is called Comedy is Tragedy That Happens to Someone Else. This was another one where I wasn't 100% sure uh, where it was going to go, and I was trying hard to not make it like other things I had seen, so I uh, took a few turns here, and we'll see how it holds up. Uh, I haven't read it again since I first wrote it, so this is the first editing. I'll be fixing everything from spelling and commas to possibly story and plot issues. This won't be its last edit. Um, I tend to do some editing off stream as well once a story's been edited once and uh, see if I can't perfect it with a, with a couple more passes. But this will be the first time I've reread it and the first edit for this one. So this story is Comedy is Tragedy That Happens to Someone Else by Jay Wilburn. The bell rang again. John Mark rattled along his track and the small wooden doors popped open on their springs to blind his eyes with the bright light of day. He rolled along between the flats of an apartment scene and the small pieces of decorative furniture. Other eyes watched from out of the blur of daylight beyond the fourth wall. God, he would give anything to be able to sit down on one of those fake couches. Uh, her doors popped open too and Mary Elizabeth bumped along her track toward him. Her eyes were the brightest unblinking blue. Her hair perfect and golden. She wore his favorite blue dress. Some of the paint was chipping away but in his eyes it just accented her beauty and made her her best features stand out all the more. All right, So that long paragraph is just to kind of show that uh, uh, he loves her without actually just stating that he loves her. All right, the pin joints of her elbows bent in a choppy motion and rested upon her lively hips. So this was going to be an argument scene. How many times have I asked you to help clean this house? It was her voice, but not operating under her will. He felt himself falling right into the role for this new script, but not very much different from older plays they had suffered through. He sheared... He, um... Good grief, I just am adding letters everywhere. All right, so let's fix that. He heard himself say, I don't see you setting the example for me. A couple people out in the crowd that John and Mary were not supposed to notice chuckled. More than a few ladies gave a gasp. Mary gave a convincing huff of her own. I can't believe you. Maybe you should have married your mother if that's what you uh, were really looking for. A few more laughs and one small child piped up with, Marry your mom? Gross. That line brought more laughs. It was a better line, unscripted. John would give up anything to be unscripted. Maybe not, in, maybe not anything. Uh, even his life was, even this life was a life lived with Mary Elizabeth. He could imagine no other. His voice went out on, went on without him. I'm just saying that we all have our roles here. Oh, is that right? So my role is cleaning up your mess, and of course your role is making them. Well, Mary, that's not exactly what I'm saying, but it is partially what you're saying? No, 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 no. The crowd got more into it as John's dialogue fell into the browbeaten husband. A few people grew bored with the melodrama, and they drifted away to uh, wherever people not living in boxes went when the show was over. The ones who were left laughed and clapped as John put on a cardboard apron and broom to start sweeping. John and Mary bowed, and then they rattled along their tracks away from each other as the velvety red curtain closed. The boxes shut behind them, and quiet darkness resumed. Mary's voice came muffled and distant, but he could hear her well enough. This was what he thought of as her real voice. The miserable, browbeaten husband again. I feel like we've done that before. A few times, John raised his voice to be sure she could hear him. How many shows do you think we'll do today? It sounded like a big crowd, I'm afraid. Mary gave the smallest sigh, but John still picked up on it. She added, well, that can go either way. Busy crowds sometimes want other attractions. Other times they come here because they are tired of waiting in line. Uh, what do you think the other attractions are like? Before she could answer, the curtain opened, the new scenery clicked into place, and the bell rung again. They were off to a new show. The scenery and fake furniture looked torn and disheveled. This was probably an out-of-control dog scene. Uh, as soon as they were in place, Mary shrieked, and John's clockwork heart skipped a couple turns on its, of its cogs. She followed the shriek by saying, It's in the house. Save me. It's in the house, John. What's in the house? He demanded with his arms raised. It turned out to be a bat that flew by on a string a few times during the short scene. One of the little kids said, That one married his mom. He said so. 
So they were getting repeat customers. It was usually the little kids that convinced their parents to keep show, keep running the show. A new show every time, the sign above their destroyed apartment promised. John believed there, uh, there, no, wrong kind of there. I hate homophone um, typos because those make me feel dumber. Uh, so I try my best to find all of those before people see them. But of course, you guys are watching this on stream, so you know my weaknesses. Uh, John believed there was a similar sign outside with the audience, or how would they know about about it when the curtain was closed? Okay. This show got a better round of applause as John rolled back into his dark box. I guess the other attractions can't be that great, Mary said, if they keep coming to us. Well, it answers whether this will be a busy day or not. As he was still talking, the bell rang again. This time they were in, up in the park. John expected a dog scene for sure this time, but this script was about him begging his wife to let him bring home a squirrel for a pet that he was feeding fake peanuts. I'm allergic to peanuts, one kid shouted. The mother explained they weren't real. Nothing here is, John said out loud. Mary went on with her dialogue that he had interrupted. The line didn't feel scripted, and it scared him. Uh, Mary, Mary finished talking, but John said nothing no line came up even though he knew in his clockwork heart that he should be saying something was he talking to me the kid asked mom didn't answer a few other people mumbled about the attraction being broken mary spoke again i said no john she was answering a line he had failed to give john finally jumped in suddenly with what he knew was the second half of a line he hadn't started but if you say so i guess i'll have to go along although i think chippy might miss me the squirrel character jumped up and stole the fake bag of, uh, of fake peanuts. I think he'll only miss your nuts, Mary said. There was a lot of laughter that John guessed was not related to the actual script. Uh, he gave a short line. He gave a short line he barely attended to, and Mary said, "You're a silly man, but I love you." The crowd awed at that, and then the kids groaned as Mary and John leaned in to kiss each other. Uh, to finish this play, as they did, Mary whispered in John's ear, "I really do love you." His clockwork heart sped up, and he felt shivers all over his metal body that he couldn't explain. As the applause died outside, and as the applause died outside, um, let's say, and the curtain closed, and the curtain closed, Mary called out to him before their doors even closed. What happened out there? He took a moment, but then answered, "I don't know. You skipped a couple lines. I know. You answered one of the kids off script." she said she sounded upset and suspicious which i misspelled which is very suspicious if an author can't spell suspicious you should should be suspicious john didn't understand why he was just scared you did didn't you i did but i don't know how i didn't mean to the bell rang and they were off again back in the apartment the dog was finally here and started jumping around the furniture barking and howling as the kids in the blurry sunlight started at laughing that dog, Mary began, but didn't finish. The dog got quieter during the stretch that was supposed to be the rest of her line. Her beautiful eyes got wider, and John wanted to reach out to hold her. His arms actually raised, and he did hold her, all on his own. The dog got louder for, again for a couple seconds. Then it quieted down. This was John's line, but nothing came to him. He finally said on his own, What about the dog? Mary shrugged. She actually shrugged. I don't know. What about him? The dog got louder, and a few people gave uncomfortable laughs. The dog got quiet, whimpered, and sat on the couch. Mary and Don John just watched it. It howled again and started and startled them both. They actually startled. The dog got on the floor and whimpered. Another pause, and then the dog panted and wagged its metal tail with a series of little clicks. John and Mary turned away from each other and rattled back to their boxes. An older man spoke as the curtain closed. I don't get it. Was that some kind of experimental theater? Let me put a uh, question mark there. A few people laughed. Okay, I need to make this a new paragraph. All right, that's what editing is for, is fixing all my mistakes. A few people laughed. Others muttered in agreement. What the hell is happening, Mary called. He had never heard her curse. I don't know. I think we're off script. What does that mean? I don't know. I wish I did. They rolled out for two more plays. One was at a beach, and the other appeared to be an office where John crouched behind a desk. What are we supposed to do? Mary asked. Why are you asking us? The, the one man called out. Give our money back. That's what another man said. This got laughs, but John was far from a laughing mood. We'll talk about. We'll talk about after the curtain. 
We'll talk about it. All right, we'll talk about it after the curtain closes. What did... Uh, man, I am dropping words all over the place here. Must have been in a hurry. What did he say? I don't know. Sounds like he was whispering. The machine is breaking. The damn thing has been around since I was a kid. Don't cuss in front of my children. Just settle down. The curtain closed and John rumbled away on his track. Something popped and then snapped behind him. He turned his head. He, he was actually able to turn his head. Mary was still in place. What's wrong, Mary? Are you broken? He wanted to go back to her. All right, let me fix that. I went here instead of her. He wanted to go back to her, but he had no control over that. Another pop and small and a and a. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Apparently, I have forgotten how to write. Thank goodness no one's watching except you five. Another another pop and a small spring ejected from her track. Mary started rolling forward with a terrible racket from inside the floor under them. She continued on and caught up with John. What are you doing? going off script she answered mary barely made it through the doors before they closed behind both of them mary i'm here she whispered she was so close he st he started reaching for her how did you do that how did you do it it's so dark in here is it always this dark yeah i thought your box was just like this i get a little light through a crack in the wood it's darker at night but there are lights that go on that go on outside at night bugs are attracted to those lights and dance around them all night John didn't understand all the words, but he answered, Maybe we should go to your place. He found her finally, and they held one another. I'm happy here with you, she said. The bell rang. This should be interesting, he said, as he started to click along his track. But she wouldn't let go. Try to stay. He did, and a terrible crashing and grinding followed. The doors popped open, letting light... Letting light... Letting light in. Oof. Because it would be letting in light. That's the proper way to say it. Letting in light, but they did not exit. They held on silently as the crowd grumbled and booed. A couple kids started crying, and John felt bad about that. After a minute that seemed much longer, the curtains closed, but the doors to the box stayed open. See? Uh, okay. It seemed like the ending was coming up pretty quick. I wanted to be sure I hadn't like accidentally erased something. I've done that before. See, she said, this is much nicer than my place. Um, they talked and held each other and sometimes kissed. There was no script for this, and John had never been happier. No more shows followed that day. As nighttime approached, the curtains opened and the front wall swung out. The boxes were removed, and a giant man not made of metal stared down at them. He got under the floor and banged around for a while. It'll be okay if we stay together, he answered. Let's, let's be specific that this is John. That John answered. The giant rose into view again. He grabbed Mary and pulled her off the track. Okay, he needs to try to hold on here. And pulled her off the track. John tried to hold on to her. But he was no match for the giant's strength. All right. Well, I hit the wrong thing, so I don't know what I'm doing now. All right. She slumped as she lifted away. John wanted to scream at him and to curse him, but no words came. There really was they there really was no script now. The giant pulled on John next. The pain was intense, but he could only scream inside his head. He cried out for Mary Elizabeth in his thoughts. As he broke loose of his track, finally free, he mused, mused for just a moment. His thoughts slowly faded to darkness.